This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's mobile workstation time. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad P15 Gen 1. We'll just call it the P15 from now on since it's the first gen. So it replaces basically the Lenovo ThinkPad P53. And because Lenovo makes all sorts of mobile workstations from the big ones to the thin and lights with Ultrabook CPUs, this is one of your genuine thick boy models. This is the full Monty, 6.05 pounds, which is 2.74 kilograms, which means you do not want to drop this on your foot. And it's about 1.2 inches thick at its thickest point. So I know some of you are going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. but you know what, for the mobile workstation crowd, that's actually a good thing when it's a chonky kind of fella, because that means that there's adequate room for cooling and for very powerful components. And we have Intel 10th gen H series CPUs, and you can even get Intel Xeon on board. So 45 watt and boy, do they boost considerably higher than that. And Nvidia graphics, anywhere from the lowly T1000 all the way up to the Nvidia RTX Quadro card, the 5000 Max Q, which is the Quadro equivalent to the 2080 GPU. So 16 gigs of VRAM on board, very powerful. We're going to look at it now. So this is available Windows 10 Home, Pro, or Ubuntu Linux for those of you who like to roll that way. It has Lenovo's usual glass fiber exterior casing and the magnesium alloy roll cage within. It feels pretty sturdy to me. There's a little bit of surface movement, of course, when you have glass fiber instead of metal, but it's sturdy enough and I think it weighs enough already. So let's not add to that weight. Hmm? Lots of ports on board. We've got two Thunderbolt 3, an additional USB-C port that supports display port. We have HDMI 2.0, full-size SD card slot, USB-A three ports and ethernet optional sim card slot there for in case you want to get 4g lte which is cat 16 4g lte you get the idea connectivity as you would expect for this sort of machine is there sure you can plug in a thunderbolt dock for convenience so you don't have to plug and unplug so many things when you bring it to your desk but you don't really need it because so many ports are built in so Intel 10th gen inside, like I said, so you can go anywhere from a Core i5 to a couple of different flavors of Core i7, 6 or 8 core, V Pro or not, to Core i9 options, which is what we happen to have, and Intel Xeon options. And you can see on the specs page right there that all the different CPUs that you can get. Quadro T1000, T2000, or Quadro RTX 3000, RTX 4000 Max-Q, RTX 5000 Max-Q graphics. And this has four RAM slots. Oh, nice. So this is what I'm talking about with these bigger mobile workstations. The expandability is just unparalleled. So that means you can get it with up to 128 gigs of RAM on board, and that's DDR4 2933 megahertz. It has two M.2 SSD slots, of course, supporting NVMe. Uh, no more three slots, no more HDD option. There's just not room for it in this chassis design. Battery is pretty capacious at 94 watt hour, and for our very powerful configuration here, top of the line, you're going to need it. That said, there are a bunch of different options. Obviously, you can go with the Core i5. You can go with the full HD display. They have 300 nit and 500 nit brightness, full sRGB display options, matte non-touch. There's our IPS 4K option, which is full Adobe RGB, which is my particular favorite, as long as you don't want touch screen, because it's matte, it's not glare, it's 600 nits, it's Dolby Vision certified. It's color accurate, it's calibrated at the factory, and they did a pretty good job with it. So if you want color accuracy and better battery life, there's that. Versus the also available 500 nit OLED option, which is full coverage for DCI P3 instead. So that one's going to hit your battery life harder and maybe is geared a little more towards content consumption and that sort of thing. I would say that generally speaking, mobile workstations are for those of you who are creating, whether it's 2D CAD or 3D renders, all that sort of stuff. That's the target audience here. Optional smart card reader, a fingerprint scanner is standard, and a Windows Hello IR camera is optional. Regardless, you're going to get the Lenovo Think Shutter, which is the physical slider switch that covers the webcam so nobody can spy on you. The keeper on this is traditional ThinkPad. It's lovely. It has deep travel, lots of spring to the keys, smile shaped keys. Mm. It's nice, nice, nice. I like typing on this a lot. It has a number pad, which some of you may or may not love. I believe it shares the same keyboard with the P17 because when we take it apart, it says P15 slash P17 on the keyboard part. Hint there. So the keyboard might be a little squeezed in because of that number pad, but I found it very easy to use. You have the usual track point eraser stick pointer on board that has dedicated buttons. However, the trackpad is the buttonless variety. Works fine though, 
comfortable, reliable. Speakers on this, two 2 watt stereo speakers. They're Dolby Vision certified. Actually pretty loud and pretty full. Lenovo did a decent job here for something that's not a multimedia oriented laptop. So basically, this is the equivalent of a gaming laptop, isn't it, only with Quadro graphics. And then, in fact, it's kind of, well, clearly, it's the Quadro version of the Lenovo ThinkPad T15G, which is the same chassis, same battery, everything, except for that one has, has NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2000 series GPUs inside. Uh, heat and noise. This is Intel, and we're still on 14 nanometer CPUs with the Intel 10th gen, so and they're going to run hot. And because Lenovo figures mobile workstation crowds want absolute performance and thermals be damned, well, that's pretty much what you get here. Running some of our benchmark tests where we usually don't see uh, the CPU hitting 100 degrees centigrade, which is the thermal max. In fact, it did on some of the tests. It's like, wow, man. In fact, there's quite a lot of multi-core boost, a short boost going on here. So this thing can consume over 100 watts. That means a lot of heat and, yes, a lot of fan noise. In fact, we got a BIOS update, and I thought maybe it was going to tame the fans a bit, you know, stop the fans, I want to get off, that kind of level of a lot of noise. Uh, but no, it didn't. So if you're just sitting and doing a Word document or something like that, no, the fans are not going to bug you, though you will hear them spin up occasionally. It's just astounding how even light work will get them going. I mean, when you're pushing it hard, if you're using Blender, if you're doing AutoCAD work, that sort of thing, or Adobe Premiere, for those of you who are looking at doing video editing and that sort of thing. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of noise here. And if you are pushing it hard with one of those kind of more demanding programs, it's not a whine or anything like that, but boy, is it one serious whoosh of air going on. So it has two fans. It has a decent number of heat pipes. It doesn't look like a gaming laptop with six levels of spaghetti heat pipe going on here, but it, it's, uh, yeah. It's, the thermals are challenging. Now, this said, we do have the most powerful, most power demanding option with the Core i9 inside and the RTX 5000 Max Q GPU inside. So, if you're going with a lower end 6 core i7 and maybe T2000 graphics or even the Quadro RTX 3000, you're not going to have so much heat. Now, battery life with a 94 watt hour battery really is going to depend on the configuration again. You know, like just I said, if, just as with the heat and the noise. If you're going with the 6-core i7, uh, the Quadro T2000, and a full HD display, then, well, your battery life's going to be way better than what we have here with the 4K display. And ours could be even worse if we had the OLED display. So anywhere from 10 hours, which given the horsepower of this machine, and that's doing light productivity work at 200 nits of brightness, uh, down to 4 to 6 for our kind of configuration is what you can expect real world unplug. Again, mobile workstation crowd, probably most of the time you're just happy you don't have to bring a desktop CPU with you on the film studio floor or whatever it is, so you're going to be charging it. Speaking of the charger, it depends on which model you get. The lower powered models have a 170 watt charger. Our bigger one has the 230 watt charger, which is a kind of like a bigger version of the traditional ThinkPad, more powerful charger, but upsized. And it doesn't look that big. It's deceptively heavy though, so you will feel that in your bag as some added weight. To take this apart, first you start with this panel right here, captive screw. So you just unscrew that one screw and yank it off. You have the other air clip, so it's going to sound a little vicious when it comes off, but that's okay. So we have two RAM slots here. They are stacked. These are not populated because there are two more RAM slots underneath the keyboard that Lenovo populates first. And here we have our two M.2 SSD slots, obviously. We have one SSD installed here. So for the basics for upgrading, that's pretty easy. Now, if you want to upgrade the rest of the stuff or service the rest of the stuff, Wi-Fi card, the other two RAM slots, you're going to take off the keyboard, which is not as horrible as it sounds. So you have to remove two screws that are not really labeled, but one is here, it's captive screws, so they will stay in place, and these hold the keyboard on, and the other one is right over here. And actually, you don't have to remove that one, just unscrew this one, and then flip it over, which we'll do next, and remove the keyboard. So now we flip it over to access the keyboard, and really it's not as bad as it seems. You're going to use something to gently pry the keyboard up in this direction. You can use a small flathead screwdriver or whatever, you know, just don't jam it way down deep. Do that, and then you lift up the keyboard like so. And there are some ribbon cables which are kind of annoying, but we'll get them out of the way. 
So that's where your 4G LTE card would go if you opted for that. This is the Wi-Fi card right here, obviously upgradable as well. And this is the other two RAM slots, so a little Phillips head screw right here, I've already unscrewed it. And then you can lift off this metal plate and see two additional RAM slots. So they populate the ones here first because this is more annoying to get to. So if you want to add more RAM on top of this RAM, you can just do it via the bottom slots that are unoccupied in our model. And, well, if you want to get to the battery to replace it, that does require more disassembly and removing the bottom cover completely. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P15 first generation, not to be confused with the Lenovo ThinkBook 15P that we recently reviewed, which is a Soho, fairly powerful but not mobile workstation sort of laptop. Anyway, if you're looking for the usual durable ThinkPad build, lots of ports and lots of performance and some very nice display options, it's here. It's gonna run hotter and louder than some of the competition from Dell and MSI, um, but at the same time, it also pushes the performance envelope higher, and man, this thing really just is fast. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.